The Rap Round Table. Yes, sir. The Rap Round Table is back. Full Voltron. All four of us on deck for the vaunted, illustrious lunch hour. You know what I'm saying? It's been a little minute. Yes, but it's sir. The fantastic four, the four horsemen, whatever you want to call us, back on deck. <laughs> you know what I mean? For this momentary occasion. Hip hop is starting to deliver the news. And as you can see, based on our content, we are starting to deliver even more high level content. We appreciate all the listeners who kind of been tapping in a lot throughout this dry spell. And y'all, y'all got to know, y'all got to see that even when there's no news, we find a way to have fun and entertain the people. Even when it's not all four of us, we find a way to have fun and entertain the people. Shout exactly. out to everybody who tapped in for 74. I couldn't be there. But the three guys in front of you that's not talking held it down beautifully. And it'll be a little bit more of that in the future. So get ready as they continue <laughs> to cook 30 balls from, from the fella scoring the points while I'm just clapping on the sidelines. I love this. <laughs> <laughs> Suited and booted. But anyway, it's your boy Jov here alongside Sassi the Rap Snob. What up, what up? Alongside Dini the Balance. May the force be with you. Alongside the homie Mace. And fellas, yeah, you know, man. in a few days, it went from Jim Jones doesn't have a chance to all of a sudden push a T is, is, is down one. And, and, and Jim Jones delivered the bars and Jim Jones is playing with house money and what's taking Pusha so long to respond. The narratives are flying all over the place. I even saw a guy that I know talked about showmanship from Jim Jones and he and Pusha can lose a battle by way of showmanship. So many questions. But well, my question to Sincere Rap Snob is, does yes, Pusha sir. T need to respond to Jim Jones right away or at all? Yes. Okay, talk to yes, me. Yes, absolutely. Um, maybe not right away. I mean, you 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 know, you uh you threw in a caveat there. It doesn't necessarily have to be right away, but, but uh, you know, in the internet age, people was like, yo, the clock is ticking. Maybe like, you know, ju- judge uh what's the name? pointed at the clock uh-huh. um but she definitely i mean he definitely has to respond uh i feel for one reason and one reason alone right uh jim jones was up on the joe Budden podcast talking kind of spicy and and there was one thing in particular that really caught my ear uh and that's when uh jim jones mentioned malice mm. In the whole thing like he was like yo you know who's who's gonna spin the block for you and he mentioned you know a few people and i was like all right whatever whatever but as soon as he mentioned malice i'm like uh bro don't do that that's that's family that's his brother that's blood you know what i mean right. and if i recall correctly back when the drake thing was happening um pusher made it a point to say uh that as soon as soon as drake mentioned his wife that's when a line was crossed right and i would think that he feels the same way about his own flesh and blood his brother mm-hmm. so i'm gonna need him to keep that same energy okay. and knowing that jim jones has crossed that line into talking about family and mentioning family push is gonna have to put the beats on him Ooh, have to i you know i expect the sin <laughs> to come in here and scoff i'm actually <laughs> No, because you know what? Because I, I I was gonna make the point that it, it it's not necessarily that he has to do it because he has something to prove. Mm-hmm. Pusha T doesn't have anything to prove to to Jim Jones in any way, shape, or form, mm. right? So had he had Jim not mentioned malice in that in that uh, conversation with Joe Budden, I would I might have come in here and said, you know what? He don't really gotta bother himself with this. You know what I mean? He made a statement. It is what it is. But now that you know. Malice was mentioned. I think Pusha needs to keep that same energy he had with Drake, you know, and put the beats on him. That's okay. it. Fair play. Mace, talk to me. Uh, Sin is right on the ball, bro. Push has to respond, man. Like, first off, when we're talking about if it's on record, Push jumped out the window first. You know what I'm saying? They made a big deal about it. He, he had the cryptic tweets. He had his homies, you know, Steven Victor and all them alluding you know doing what they did for the god did verse you know what i mean like it's coming it's coming so listen man like i know i see a lot of people you know they make the false equivalency like hey ether took six months hey biggie never responded to hit him up this that and the third listen this is that don't tell me about shit from 25 years ago bro this is I, the internet age it's, my it's nigga like time. it's a different time we we listen to music differently we hear albums differently we we consume music a completely different way 
at this point, you you know, you don't have to pay for Quad Studios or Chun Chun King Studios anymore, my nigga. Everybody can do this shit from their phone and their crib. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? From their tour bus. You know what I'm saying? Uh, oh, Fabulous is the only one that took you know ten years to find a studio. You know what I mean? But <laughs> listen, so he heavy is the head that wears the crown. Pushes half of pushes allure. I don't want to say half, but. One of the things about him nowadays is, you know, the bully energy, the big bad wolf energy, the don't step out because I'm a close the door energy. You know what I mean? So listen, man, you came back with that story of Adidon like a couple days after that, after Drake dropped his response to infrared. You know what I'm saying? So and, and we clown Drake for not being able to respond in a timely manner. You know what I'm saying? So listen, we got to be honest with it. It, it of course no Jim Jones or Pusha T aren't gonna do anything to each other's career at this point these are both they're both legacy artists if you wanna be honest with it you know what I mean nobody's gonna say I'm not listening to Push anymore you know <laughs> I don't know how Jim Jones fans talk about his music like that but you know what I mean nobody's not fucking with Jimmy anymore you know what I'm saying so you know it's all for sport and you know Push is one of the people that is known for loving the sport. You know what I mean? So he got he got to respond, bro. He has to. Okay, we need a balance. Definitely has to respond. Does the response have to be timed? Not necessarily. That nigga could wait till the next LV show for all he cares, bro. You right. know what I'm saying? The way I look at it, um, Jimmy Jimmy's bars, we can't discount. He's not bargain bin Jimmy on this. You know what I'm saying? Like, these were some bars. We not gonna act like he wasn't actually spitting. Like for a nigga that really didn't think Jim was even going to have it in him, Paul. I'm you know, like, it was bro. I'm, so Jimmy, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna act like it was. I mean, considering that it's it's Jim Jones. Yeah, but even at that point, like I, I've heard Jim on. Jones come harder than that, bro. I've heard Jim be, you know, come harder. Pause. But. Maybe maybe, maybe in a song, maybe in a song for a vibe, but it's for we don't really hear Jimmy going at niggas specifically. It's not really a not really a battle rapper. You right. know what I'm saying? That's why it's right, another right. thing. And and he's jumping in the ring with a nigga that a lot of niggas have been ducking. You get what I'm saying? So I am going to give Jimmy his respect for even trying to compete. Uh shout out to the homie E Loose. My homie E Loose was in the studio with him, engineer, while he was cooking that up. He said that he just started saying shit off the top of the head, pieced it together. Next day they recorded it. I respect the quick response. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Does push have to with the inside you? info? No. We love it. You know I mean? We got family. You know what I'm saying? Like as far as the time, no. But he has to respond. As far as the thing Sin was talking about with the um with the malice thing, I don't think. I mean, your wife and your brother, family, but not the same extent. You know what I'm saying? A guy has a fight with my brother. I'm expecting my brother to handle that till he can't handle that. My wife, I'm coming outside regardless. You get what I'm saying? It's a whole different energy. Not to mention, yeah. Alice ain't no scared nigga with the pen either. Mm -hmm. He could really jump in there and pretty much smoke Jim up too if he was really inclined to. So I'm not really worried about that. But I mean, I, I'm giving Jimmy props, bro. I didn't think I was going to get what I got. And I got something that was all right. I ain't going to lie. It, was, it, was it like game changing? Was it oh. enough to win? Probably not. But the fact that he ain't backed down, a lot of niggas would have backed down, bro. Like, Push has mm. been, push, like, we talk about it. Push has been the boogeyman for what? The past seven, yeah. eight, nine years? You get what mm -hmm. I'm saying? What nobody really wants to do. And the only reason I feel like he popped out like that was because, I mean, it's Drake, bro. If anybody would make you change your element and come out and do something you wasn't going to do before, it would be the biggest name in rap right now. So I get the whole Drake angle. Jimmy's not necessarily that guy. Plus, he don't really... Get, there's no real stripes for Pusha winning this. You know what I'm saying? All the all the house money essentially is Jim. Because if let's say Jim, let's say Pusha drops son and it's dope, but it, it's it's not Pusha the way this you say this isn't Jim. And what if Jim's next join is tough? The fact that it's even a game now is all pluses for Jim, bro, and all negatives for, for Push. So Push gotta adjust the game plan on the next one for this. Me personally, but does he have mm -hmm. to respond? Yes. Timely, not say, necessarily. You saying Push is the one that got something to lose here? Of course. Well, that's that's where I'll come in, you know, because Mace made that point and then Dini kind of doubled down. To me, like the roles have changed because, you know, everyone say, oh, he jumped out the window when it was Arby versus Pusher, right? <laughs> but to me, in this position, as far as the, since we do it for sport, that's that's the conversation here, right? Mm -hmm. To me, Drake right. and Pusher team was always personal and it became personal. We know the history with that. 
And this situation is about the sport. And to me, if it's about the sport, then Pusha T is the Drake in this situation. He's he's the bigger act. He's the more skillful act. He's the person that's expected to win here. Just the same way Drake's celebrity and fame was supposed to muffle whatever noise Pusha T was making. Uh, when it comes to having to respond, I, this is where I, I kind of hate the social media game. Because the reality is that this was weak. You know what I mean? It was, to me, this, this is another one of those little engine that cut situations because we know we know Kapo is not a good rapper. So a lot of people are more impressed at what he delivered more so than how good it actually was. Kapo right. himself tipped his hand when he went on Joe Button's pod referencing the repossession bar. That tells you already, even if you could go on in any platform and say the bars in the land, if you're referencing a bar in an interview and, and Joe didn't ask you to break the bars on, you did that on your own. Landed. It's it landed yeah. <laughs> again. Yeah. The, the, the next thing that we have to take into account, it's easy for y'all to say what's taking him so long to respond. One dude is just not doing shit. The album with, with Hitmaker flopped. <laughs> you had ample time. There's no, I guess there's no season of love and hip hop happening. So he had ample enough time to go to the stool, get someone to write him some bosses. I'm not buying that story, Deanie. No disrespect to your mans. But I'm not buying it for one second that he freestyled it in pieces. Every, 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 everybody's hove now. The word. Everybody. Yo. Everybody's Come on, the man. Word. Stop lying. And for the rest of twenty, all you rappers who are not good, stop lying about you not writing your bars. You're not good enough to not write your bars. Period. When we when we break all of these things down, bro, the only reason Pusha T has to respond is because the loud majority. The angry mob has made it so that it, they created this this matrix that somehow Jim Jones is ahead, and it just goes to show that a lot of people really don't like Pusha T. They only say it on the internet so they don't get ratio. And the first time someone jumps out the window who's 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 aesthetically an equal, now they can say how they really feel. That's how I'm coming because they know Drake is soft. They're not Drake. Come on now, no people wanted to see Drake lose. Let's call it what it is. Right. In this situation, it's a different game now. In this situation, there's a lot more people who want to be a Jim Jones, a heavy bravado, heavy braggadocious, tough guy persona. A lot of people gravitate and want to be that, as opposed to the fashion, the fashionista. Shout out to you, Rand, the fashionista rapper. <laughs> nobody, nobody wants to talk about that. To me, they want to see Pusha T lose because they don't buy the bars. They don't think he's that good, and they want another tough guy to show that you could only pick on guys that are your lesser. But the reality of the situation is this: if we, if we, you know, do a bar breakdown, bar for bar, line for line, it's not close. If anything, y'all are setting up. What's this guy? Jim Jones's funeral. Because now, because the difference between a famous rapper that's a close to a billionaire and a Pusha T is a Pusha T is petty. He's not that rich, and he has time, and he's paying attention to all the noise. Even the AI versus that Cameron and JR, I always people are involving themselves in the situation. You know what I'm saying? If anything, all of y'all have made it worse for Jim because now that next verse, because this thing's plenty of things that I, I'm sitting here, that hot 37 interview where he went off flex and he cried, Jim Jones, that is. You don't, <laughs> oh, yeah. you don't think there's a bar for that? Like y'all are of setting course. up a funeral here. That's all I'm going to say. Um, I just. Of bar. It's yeah, I just, I just, <laughs> I just want to spin back real quick to something May said, um, or not, not necessarily that May said, but he uh, mentioned something that a lot of people are saying, uh, and that was the turnaround uh, mm -hmm. from from Pusha T towards Drake. And to, I mean, to that point, like all I'm going to say is like, what? Of course he did. You know what I mean? It was Drake. Like that they, they had, they already had a history, and like Pusha T was just like, it's like he was so ready to pounce on that moment he was like finally i got this nigga like and he pounced on it you know what i mean this is jim jones he's good like if he's if he's gonna respond to jim jones it's it's not that urgent for him you know what i mean that's it's not it, jim jones is not drake like why is he gonna rush to respond to jim jones like that? And, and his, even, even, his, even the rush back is an insult to, right. to, to push your t you know what i'm saying even if he drops something tomorrow we'll be like damn nigga two days for, for jim jones like you know right. what I'm saying? Like, it's it a just lose, seems lose. too it's a yeah and here's it what is. i'll say before we move on if anything push it taking this long to respond is the charity 
that Jim Jones was looking for from that Drake feature. Because now you're yeah. on top of the world. People are saying that you're ahead in the battle. People are saying that you you are the real nigga in this situation. You are the showman. You're getting all the clout you couldn't get when Hitmaker and y'all was lying about Hitboy doing your little radio run. You know what I'm saying? So again, it's charity Pusha T's doing, but the reality is TikTok. <laughs> Yeah, you know I mean that verse. <laughs> that verse is coming. It's probably gonna be thirty-two or forty-eight bars, and then we're gonna forget this even happened. Let it fly, and then we're gonna. Be like, oh shit! <laughs> Didn't realize it. <laughs> but fellas, I just want to know where where all that Jim Jones uh, showmanship was on the verses that people be talking about. <laughs> That's yeah. Oh man. What, what, yeah. What, what what about if, if somehow Pusha mentions when he fell off the stage during the verses? You know I mean? A lot of moments <laughs> to talk about, man. Come on, and, and hip hop, you know. That's all, that's all I'm saying. Well, let's let's move on to the next topic. You guys, again, the Rap Roundtable, episode 74. If you haven't checked it out, make sure you check it out after you're done with the lunch okay. hour. The fellas, sure. as usual, ahead of the curve, you know, referencing, you know, what would a KD4 potentially sound like? And in, the, and in the days after the release of that episode, news comes out that Nas is back in the studio working. I think Hip Hop DX supported it. That man is active. We might not have to wait until the end of the year for it too. Because if it's coming out in late June, that means we might get a third quarter release. Nas don't put out stuff to make you wait six months. You know right. what I'm saying? So I, I, I beg the question of Nas is back working. Dini, I'm coming to you, bro. You look like you got a 30 ball in you tonight, bro. <laughs> After what you said on 74, Esco confirms he's back working. You were talking about maybe a Magic 2 or this or that. Like, mm -hmm. if I know. If he's this active, what do you think the stakes are? How high are these stakes now? Uh, the stakes are real high. Um, a a, a three-peat is always an amazing feat. You get what I'm saying? It rarely happens, but a four-peat is something special. And I, I think that's what Nas is all right now. So have a, to have a five-peat, you know what I'm saying? Like, when's, that even, when's the last time that's been done in, like, in any era of anything? Like, you know uh, yeah, saying? maybe. Like, maybe. Maybe. And that was like early 2000s. Like, to the, towards the end of the late 2000s i mean come on dog like this is this is monumental i'm i'm really excited about this i'm sure i know even the niggas that's not the biggest nas fans are excited about this salute to all the nas the nas you know what i'm saying y'all getting what y'all wanted and we get to talk about nas so you know we'll Thanks. be here for that but i'm here for it my only thing is will it be a another hit boy collab you know because mm. i'm sure at this point they have a process i'm sure they have a situation um it's yeah, just yeah. will they will they continue that or will they will they bring someone else in to maybe assist you know but the thing with the assist that can either amplify what they've done or that can hinder what they've done so i'm really interested to see how they pro want to approach or how they like i'm already saying hit boys a part of it but mm. I, I i'm feeling like that's gonna be the move i'm feeling like we're gonna get the kd4 or the magic 2. i mean i would go either way but kd4 would be something special i ain't gonna lie and I, I'm, I'm here for it bro i'm every bit of it Nah, you may talk to me. Um, listen, man. At this point, it's Stephen A. Smith finals predictions, and then me Nas album predictions. It's right next to each other. Bro. I'm wrong every fucking time. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, literally, right after I said it ain't happening, Nas said he's he's in the zone. You know what I mean? So, of course, listen, man. Nas is in the fucking zone, right? Like. Hit boy, I mean, we don't know if it's with Hit Boy. I feel like we all assume it's with Hit Boy, right? You know what I mean? It could be that Nas project that Leroy is waiting for. He could be in there with Primo. <laughs> Primo. You know what I'm saying? But let me ask you this though, Dini. Let me come back yeah. to you with just the answer here. When you say four P, do you you think all four albums are classic? Yes. Yes. And I feel I like they get I better, think. they get better each with each one. You get what I'm saying? I know some people have their own. Some people may feel KD one's the best. To me, they get each KD gets better as the, as the next one comes along. So you felt so like the first one was a classic. I love KD three. You feel Magic. like it might be the greatest album ever? Nah, I, nah not uh, come on, though, not ever. Yes. But the 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 quality of the, the quality <laughs> of the music <laughs> we're getting from Nas at this age, at any age, if this was Nas at 30, I'd, I'd still be impressed. But the quality of music of course, we're getting right now, in 2023 from a gentleman who's damn near touching 50, I mean, a man can't lose, man. Everything that you want is there, man. There's still stories, there's still great bars, there's still punchlines, there's concepts, there's 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 progression, you know what I'm saying, introspection. Mm -hmm. Come on, bro, this is Nas we talking about. Like, you, All right, like, hold on. 
Yeah. I asked that to. Oh, go ahead, y'all. What you about to say? It is. Is it partially? Do you think it's good? Period. Or are you factoring the stage of his career when you give him that high mark? This. This is not me saying that. We covering all bases with this conversation. Yeah. Like, all right. So let's say, like, are are any of the KDs and Nas's top five? Like, if we want to have a conversation like that. Yeah. Um. I think KD three and Magic are in that discussion. It's it's close, bro. One you know of the two. Saying? Like when, when you have arguably the greatest hip hop album of all time with Illmatic, you know what I'm saying? My favorite Nas album. It was written, lost tapes. Like there's there's a lot of great shit, but I mean that we're not gonna discount that KD series, bro. Especially especially. See, I'm getting lost. I don't mean to cut all you right, off. If I no no if I I'm could getting lost here though. No no if I how many fifty year old rap actually looking for an album? If I if I could get lost here. If I if, if I could chime in real yeah. real 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 quick, I think um I think the point Dini's trying to make is that like let's let let's take it back to basketball. If somebody wins the championship, right, they get a chip. We don't ask like is that chip better than the chip from twenty years ago, the mm. chip from forty years ago. The chip is a chip, you know what I mean? So like we're we're well, I I feel like when Dini's talking about this four Pete it's it, it's something that that stands on its own in its own time you know what i mean not comparing it to is it is it a classic like illmatic was a classic is it, is it a mm. classic like it was written or lost tapes was classics or still matic or whatever you know what i mean it's mm -hmm. it, it i think he's saying it's a classic in its own time mm. you know what i mean so my, my whole thing is that when we question. call him we, when we say Nas dropped four classics in a row at this point, you know, we doing what we did to him in the 90s, right? We setting the bar so high that anything below at this point with Dini saying one of the greatest albums that ever existed, you know what I'm saying? Then then I like I, I want Nas to be in a place where he feel like he can make a good album. Maybe not the greatest album that ever was made and we mm -hmm. still appreciate it. You feel oh, what I'm saying? So course, that's I mean, my that's I respect that. I respect that 100%, but at the same time we still got to pay the homage to, to what this run is. Like, is it four that's, consecutive sure. that's what I'm saying. classics? Classics. I don't, I don't believe it's four consecutive classics. I think it's four consecutive fire four albums. albums. Yeah. The, I like KD1 better than KD2, but the consensus is each time he released, pause, the level increased <laughs> each time. You know what I'm saying? Hey! I, I caught it. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> to, me, hey. to me, if it was just KD one and then KD two and then we stopped, maybe the conversation is a little different. But to me, magic raises the stakes. Is ma magic is really what elevated this entire conversation surrounding the I agree. experience. And then when he followed that with KD three, it's yeah. like, oh, they really not playing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because KD three to me is, if it's not better than magic, it's on it's on par with magic. You know what I'm saying? But I guess my question with this whole thing, Nas is back outside and telling you he's in the run, telling you that he's do. We see with the collaborations and the, and doing working with Metro Boo and all this and that. But my question to be to Sin, not so we know we're excited. Yes, uni universal excitement. But is this too sure. much of a good thing, Sincere? Uh, you can't have too much of a good thing. Okay, that's fair. So. Especially for you know for an artist like Nas. Um, but what what I will say is that. And uh, even taking this entire conversation into account, um, I think I'm gonna go out on the limb. And but but I, I think I'm not gonna say Nas is gonna go left with whatever he's working on, mm -hmm. but he's gonna go slightly left of center. Like if people are still expect, if, like we've been talking about it. Like why why you know if it, if it is if it isn't broke, then why why fix it or why change right. it? I mean. He's four straight fire projects, fire albums, you know, debatable classics um, with Hit Boy. Why would you steer away from that? And I think that I don't know. I just have this feeling that he might he might go slightly left, do Ooh. some, maybe not have it be part of the KD series anymore. Maybe just keep K King's Disease as a trilogy. You know what I mean? A, tri a trilogy always. You know what I mean? Like you always point to trilogies, like you know the okay. Batman trilogy, okay. the Star, all the Star Wars trilogies. Like you always point to trilogies, so keep that as it is. I wouldn't say he would drop like a Magic too because mm. he already he already announced that he's he's in the studio. Magic was a complete surprise drop, like nobody expected that whatsoever. So just 
tipping his hand at the, the fact that he's even in the studio, that's not really the magic vibe. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So I don't know what he's cooking, um, but I, I think it's going to be something that's that's going to divert from the current path. Not not go completely left, not on not on some Kendrick Andre 3000 shit, but like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Maybe well, a Metro little, Boom and <laughs> Metro Boom type shit. And right, maybe, so. you know, maybe incorporate Metro Boom and maybe incorporate Alchemist. Hit Boy and Alchemist have been, you know, mm -hmm. uh, okay. collabing. So that that's my that's my thought. Chad, let us know what you think about this next upcoming Nas album as far as what direction you think is going to go. Let us know in the chat or if you can't, just put it in the comment section so we can review it for the next mailbag. Um, I think I'm leaning towards Sin with this one. I think, I don't want to say the book is closed on the Hit Boy front to back album, you know, starring Nas. I think this is going to be the Nas album now that you could honestly say this is the biggest light that's been on him in hip hop since his first run. I think this might be the project where we get an all-star cast of modern mm. producers. Not not mm. not not the bust around rap where we going against Swiss beats and Neptunes and these guys. I think it's gonna be Hit Boy. I think it's gonna be Alchemist and Sims Point. It's gonna be Metro. It's gonna be somebody we never heard of. It's gonna be a, a nice mixed bag of sounds. And just for for this guy Leeward Green, there'll be a primo track <laughs> on there too. It might be the intro or the outro. You know what I'm saying? But I think I'm, I'm, I'm on Sin's side with that. I believe that this is going to be that album where he really flexes. This is going to be the album that, pun intended, has mass appeal. That's where I'm at with that. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. And last but not least, before we get out of here, uh, there was some there was some noise on the internet about Black Star removing a album from Luminary and, and making it available for purchase. Am I right in that, Sin Say? Like, that you could copy yeah, vinyl or on, you copy uh, it? No vinyl yet, but okay. on Bandcamp. Bandcamp. That's shout, yeah. shout out to the guys from Griselda who made Bandcamp really lit a couple of years ago. And yeah. I see a lot of guys running the Bandcamp so you could cop. Because I think, Sin, you I said this a, a few years ago. I, I never forgot it. When you was like, people put their stuff on Bandcamp, see who really messes with them before it goes on the DSPs. Right. So yeah. Yeah. it's on Bandcamp now. It's no longer on Luminary. And some people are up in arms about it, saying that essentially Black Star. It's double dipping because you made them download. Pete, they you, they made people download Luminary, and now you have to buy the album on Bandcamp. Send you stirring already. Talk to me. <laughs> it's just it, it's such a weird argument, man. Like, I mean, it's 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 a few very loud voices <laughs> that mm -hmm. I've seen on the internet. Um, very upset about this move, um, and this whole notion that like. Black Star or Talib Kweli specifically made y'all go and get a Luminary subscription. It's it's preposterous to me. Look, th this is how I feel about it, right? Um, I'm I've been a fan of Kweli. I've been a I've been a fan of Black Star, right? Uh, and and both of them, Kweli and Yasin Bey, most def separately as well, uh, for some time. And um, they, you know, they've always sort of uh lived in in the underground spaces of hip-hop from from the from the beginning of their careers right and so um the type of artists that they are in today's day and age and we we've talked about this and you out there have talked about it i know you have um in today's day and age like there's certain artists that are they feel like yo like apple music is not paying enough spotify is not paying enough youtube's not playing paying enough titles not paying like whatever the platform is they just not paying enough you know what i mean and so they i feel like a lot of artists are, are right now trying to figure out where do they fit in the market what is the the best move for them uh moving forward so that they can feel properly compensated for their art and their product right and so in steps you know this platform luminary uh, and I feel like, you know, maybe Black Star was like, yo, let's just think outside, outside the box. Like, maybe it doesn't have to be a music platform. Maybe it could be this podcast platform. Who knows, right? But I, 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 I respect the thinking outside the box, right? I respect it. But when the album came out and was announced, and I saw that it was going to be on this one platform, and I don't care about anything else that's going to be on that platform other than this one album, I'm looking at it like, I, I want to hear the album, but I'm not I'm not dishing out all this money to subscribe to Luminary. Mm. You know what I mean, I got my little free trial. I listened to the album. I liked it. The free trial ran out. And then that was it. Have I felt like revisiting the album in the past year? Yes, I have. 
Did I go out and willingly pay money out of my own pocket to this platform just to listen to this one album and nothing else on the platform? No, I didn't. Because the same way that Blackstar and Quali has a choice in what they do with their art and their product, I have a choice of what I do with my money. Nobody's making me do anything. You know what I mean? So now, a year later, they decide, all right, we're going to take it off this platform. We're going to put it on Bandcamp. And just like Quali said, like, we're going to put it on Bandcamp. But like, do y'all just expect it, us to put it out for free all of a sudden? Like, no, this is still commerce. This is still, they still are looking for a way to be compensated for their product and their art. Like, how do you, how do you not understand that? You know what I mean? And so like for anybody out there that's mad that an artist that again, in this day and age, like we, we've been talking about artists trying to find a way to get properly compensated because the, the, the math, the math ain't math and the numbers ain't numbering on these streaming platforms. Right. So they're trying to find a way. Right. And I respect it. You know what I mean? So, um, I'm looking at it from, from that perspective. I, I, nobody made me do anything, right? So if you feel like somebody made you do something, maybe that's on you. Maybe you need to look at yourself <laughs> and look at your right. decision-making abilities. So here's, here's what I'll jump in and I'll say, you know, because I feel like this is a tiered situation. On the surface level, I can understand why a person might want to clutch their wallet or if you're a woman, clutch your purse and not want to cop because, yeah, you pay for that luminary subscription. A lot of people did. Everybody didn't do the little free trial and then kept it pushing. They paid for luminary and, they, and some of them are still paying for luminary. Hell, I got got paying for luminary because thing is, I heard the album when it came out. As we all know at the rap round table, I did not like the album. I didn't see the vision. I still don't see the vision. I thought most of did his thing, but Tyler Kwale could keep his bars. I, and I've been, that's been my energy. As long as Sincere has known me, I've been saying the same things about Tyler Kwale. My energy has not changed. He's good at rapping, but he can keep it from my perspective. He does nothing for me. So I can understand the surface level thought of if I paid for Luminary, why should I have to now buy the album a year later? It, 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 on a surface level to the common person, it's a bit in bad taste when you could put it on the DSPs and we could just stream it since we're already paying for streaming. I get all of that, right? But my, my whole thing is, to Sim's point, it, it is about commerce. And it's a thing we always talk about on the rap round table that gets lost sometimes in the noise. If you fuck with an artist for real, for real, it doesn't matter what they do. The people who really rock with you, they're gonna they're gonna support whatever you do. If we put it out on Luminary and now we pulled it back, whatever happened with Luminary, and this is something that I'm not seeing being discussed. Whatever happened with Luminary, obviously the business relationship didn't go accordingly for either side. So they pulled it, put it on Bandcamp. Because again, why should I have to go to a podcast or a, a, was it an audio book app to listen to an album. What if I just want to press play and keep it moving? Why should I have to jump through hoops, right? If you mess with me, tap into the album, support the wave because you support, like we always say, you supporting us helps us support our business because at the end of the day, it's business. Hope said it mad years ago. You should buy it, nigga. It's good business. And if you fuck with these artists, you cop the album. When we put the merch out, you cop the merch. That's all this is, right? Now to the flip side of that, this is what I'll say. If I'm going to put out an album on a DSP, and then I'm going to pull it a year later and put it on Bandcamp. I can't go on comment sections arguing with fans who don't understand the vision. <laughs> Quali, Quali, as a person who herself has argued with fans, a lot of times you can't expect people to know what your thought process is. And in some other cases, you can't expect people to be smart. One plus one still equals two. But sadly, we know we meet people every day who get 11 when they add one and one. And you cannot argue with the motherfuckers that get 11. You got to talk to the people that get two. If you spend all them days arguing with the people who got 11, you're fucking up your own rollout. Now we know what to cop your album. Now you just look like an angry dickhead. And that, that, wasn't, that wasn't what this was supposed to be. And you allow people to control your narrative. And that's where I think things got a little bit sour with this whole right. situation. You know what I'm saying? Last but not least, if you if the NBA finals is on YouTube TV and you wanted to watch it on YouTube TV and the only way you want to watch the finals, the only way you could watch it is to get YouTube TV. Then you went and you got YouTube TV. It was the same thing with the album. This is business. It's commerce. Again, to Sid's point, he said the word commerce. Understand how that works before you get in your feelings. Mace, what are your thoughts? Nah, uh, 
great takes by by both of y'all, man. Y'all kind of y'all y'all really covered all bases with that one. I I agree with y'all to the point that you kind of being biased if you don't see both sides of the argument. You know what I mean? No, like I could imagine being the artist upset here. I could imagine being the fan upset here. You what know what I'm saying? What did it make you feel when you see, when you saw what happened? Maybe I should have asked you that. Well, well, honestly, I felt I listen, man. If you're not watching the music industry in 2023, we try to put y'all on game. It's very little ways to make money out of this shit, bro. Like, we gotta be honest, bro. Like, you know, Talib is not one of those artists who can sell his masters and get a quick 15, 20. You feel what I'm saying? Like, like, we have to be honest. So I wasn't, I'm I wasn't upset at this. You know what I mean? Maybe I because I didn't download Luminary, you know what I'm saying? Maybe I, I didn't get God. So maybe. You know, I wasn't feeling the way. But at the end of the day, Sin, answer two questions for me. You said it was up there for an entire year, yes? Right, yeah. So it, it was up there for an entire year. And another thing, when is the time, last time, I feel like you would know best out of all of us, when's the last time uh, Talib went on some sort of U.S. international tour? A tour? I can't even say a tour. He does shows here and there. He does shows like at Brooklyn Bowl. He does shows at like the Blue Note. You know what I mean? But like a tour tour? Box like shows movie. that's going to get you a, a few racks. And I'm not trying to count pockets. I just know how the not industry a, works. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Talib got to make money. Like most death is good. So he he can say, listen, uh, I love making an album with you, but we're not going to take this out on tour. Let's just let the fans support, brother. Like Talib, this is <laughs> the most we spoke about him other than Kanye talking crazy about him in, in since the Chappelle show, bro. Right. He got to, you know what I'm saying? Like, let Talib get his money. I, I can understand, like, to a certain degree. Like, yo, I paid for this. I support it. And then he took it off. But if you a Talib fan, which I feel you have to be a big Talib fan to even have downloaded Luminary just for a Black Star album, right. then you should understand that Talib kind of, I don't want to say he needs the money, but it's like, bro, like, how can a motherfucker like Talib benefit off of his art nah. in 2023? <laughs> When you watch the landscape, you're not wrong to right. say he needs the bread because if he's here, this emotional about it and arguing with fans and being amongst the people, it means something to him. You dig? Right? Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, but he's, he's kind of like that about everything, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> he stubs his own toe. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Dini, bring and, 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 and by, was... by no means, okay, go ahead, go ahead, cook, Dini. Nah, cook, go ahead, Sam. No, nah, I was gonna say by no means am I. Um, Top and please for uh Quali's behavior on right. social media. Like that that's a different story. You know what I mean? But I feel like right. things can be true right. at the same time. You, you know can't right. expect Talib, to buy your Talib shit talks crazy to niggas. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Let's say that for the record. We all think Talib talks crazy to niggas online. Okay? I hope he can fight because right. he's gonna run into somebody <laughs> who's gonna want to get a shake with him eventually, right? <laughs> that's probably that's it. Listen, have to. Have to. I mean, but Dini, what you think? You usually like a, a kind hearted individual. You Yo. try to see the light in things. What's going on here? Yeah. I got I got a lot of I got a lot of thoughts on this, man. Um first of all, as I, I give you my example. I watch I watch the NBA. You know what I'm saying? I buy league pass every year. But all my niggas understand the blackout restrictions. You know what I'm saying? All my niggas understand when you know there's um certain certain joints you can't watch till three hours after the game's over so i right. also pay for sling bro you get what i'm saying <laughs> so i could watch the current game so i'm the wrong person to ask about this because i'm the type i'm gonna pay for what i really want which mm -hmm. i think talib is on that same type of time like if you really want this shit, pay for it i mean i get it my nigga niggas is buying niggas is smoking big blunts nowadays mm -hmm. weed ain't cheap Niggas is buying Jordans come out every week, bro. Niggas be having every pair of J's. Like niggas is like, if you got two hundred for a pair of J's, you got two fifty for for an ounce, bro. You got ten dollars for an album. So on that point, I totally see where he's coming from. It's the way you go about it, though, my dude. Like even when even when we try to chop it up with him, you know, talk some sense into it. Maybe people don't understand how Luminary works. Maybe people don't understand how to. Maybe some people thought I paid one time and I got every album that's coming out for the rest of it. For, for lifetime as we pay like what our ten dollars for apple music so we get everything that comes out that's maybe what some people thought i dropped my 10 or whatever they I'm take albums everything. off apple music bro you, you get what i'm saying that's that may be a, a view that these dudes had but but i i get where he's coming from in that sense but it's it's the people bro and also you mentioned the money mace yasin bay acts bro you know what i'm saying 
like Talib raps. And when he's not rapping, I don't know where the secondary income's coming from. As far as the Luminary deal, I understand it because they had a him, Dave, and um Yasin had a had a podcast on right. Luminary. So I guess right. they transitioned that Luminary deal with the right. podcast to the music deal too, which makes sense. And they do go on tour because they go on tour with Dave. You got to think they they Dave go on tour, bro. And they go with him, so that's still that's still a couple songs, but that's still another nigga who basically run has to say so in your pockets because you can't go on that show without him. But he can go right. on that show without you. So it's a it's a different energy. So I do understand he's coming from this from a actually. Yo, this is how I make my bread, bro. Like I don't I don't stop rapping and go work at Starbucks to earn the rest of my but bread. Then, like in, in that case, and don't say nothing when people comment on your Instagram. Turn the comments the, off. That's the, if you can't handle the smoke, turn there's a turn the comment off feature on Instagram or don't respond to them. It's that simple. Nah, that's uh, that's something I've wondered for years. I don't know where where he has the time or the energy to respond to absolutely everything <laughs> that's thrown he's his rapping, way. Bro. On, so, I mean, he's on not rapping, bro. He's not rapping. Like, and, like, you know he, and, and he don't even like he don't even have his Twitter account no more. I think, I think he's like, <laughs> they banned him, bro. Like, yeah, most like, the, like not even, not even, I don't want to compare him with his man, but you got to think. Like I said, most is doing movies right now. Most is on tour with Erica Badu. You know what I'm saying? So it's mm. most is outside, bro. Like. Talib kind of like connected to Most in that way, where it's like if Most ain't really cooking, cooking, then Talib's not really cooking. So it's it's he's in a tough position visually. For all I know, that nigga have millions invested somewhere else, bro. I'm just talking about aesthetically, just looking on, looking at the picture. Fair play, fair play. Yeah, so I mean, I think we covered everything on this episode. I don't know if anybody else. Yeah, got I don't know. My my last words would be: if if you're a fan, if you really feel like you're a fan, fan, not not like an entitled troll but a fan and you want to support and you're always talking about support the music support the culture then just keep supporting bro just mm. support i respect it's it, funny how I support the culture turned into we expect xyz and you gotta bro like right. the energy that that the support is a, very, a, that is a double-edged just, sword you know what i mean right, like, it's negative right. Cause they, you, right. you can't just tell niggas buy this shit or fuck you. You can't really just do that. You get what I'm saying? If you really want people to support, nah. This, you can think it, but you can't say it. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. You but either I keep supporting or just take business, or just take right. the L as a lesson. You know what I mean? Right. So you don't you see. Gotta the, take the L as a lesson, you, bro. You don't see sending Kanye's comments talking about that fucking stem player, bro. <laughs> yeah. Yo, but, but keep it a bean. Which was much go, more egregious. Yeah, keep it you a know bean what before man? we go, your man could have dropped the video just explaining it like, listen, y'all, we was on Luminary just then the third, the deal didn't work out, but now we back. We got band camp, so you know, bring it over to band camp. But you just telling niggas like, yo, we paying for this over here, and I just jump over here. You don't explain nothing yeah. to niggas. What I'm gonna say is, I was style. trying to wrap it up, but what I'm gonna say is, because that's what it looks like to me. Y'all can tell me if I'm bugging chat. Y'all can tell me if I'm bugging. It sure looks like Kwali is either frustrated with his audience or he doesn't like some of the people in his audience. <laughs> it could be because yes, Diddy is so I mean, his, his, his customer service and his customer relations right. is, like it's not it's never really like really been there so because Diddy landed it all that instead of putting that post that he put up with the album or he could have just put a video peace y'all we don't we no longer on luminary but we'd appreciate y'all support us over at bad camp you can get your own personal copy and y'all y'all could have did a little bundle a little a little black star t-shirt or something like right. that need us somewhere you know I mean? if we can sign your put shit out a video. a little spot in Oh, or, or pull up, pull a, a artist move, a new age artist move, and call it a deluxe with one new song. You know what I'm saying? Something. Yeah, I know yeah. y'all got some in the vault, bro. Get right. people what they want. He did wrong. He did Perhaps. wrong. But at the same time, we're never gonna knock somebody hustle for trying to get bread or tell them or tell an artist what they should do. The artist is entitled to do whatever they want. We as commentators are only here to commentate, and that's about it. You know what I mean? Their art, their product, and their art. At that's the end it. of the day, bro. Very like yeah. that. Yeah, not, and at the end of the day, the worst thing an artist could do is put out bullshit material. So if you like the album, you right. know what I mean? I guess Lovely. you should appreciate that, right? Go. Artist disrespect. I feel disrespected when when honestly never mind came out. You feel me? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, apparently Drake dropping an R&B album, so you know, get ready for that. Yeah. Uh-huh. Let's see. That's yeah. his. That's the bag right there, not the house. We gonna bag. see. Like, we gonna see. Right? <laughs> yeah. Dini, take us home, bro. Yo, y'all know what it is, man. Shout out to all the supporters. Day one's newly found. Y'all know the vibes, man. Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, fucking Instagram, Apple Podcasts, everything you want. We on it, yo. Tap in, 
Sensei the fucking rap snob, Jav the fucking point guard, Mace the fucking voice, I'm Dini the fucking ballast, and I said fucking too much, and we are here! Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> the four horsemen.